To all who come to this happy place, welcome. Please stand clear of the doors. For favor, we invite you to the day. This is a wild ride in the whisper. When in this strange trap, dawn is changing. Hello and welcome to Miles from Main Street, your Far From Disney podcast. My name is Mikhailo. And I'm Brian. And we're here to talk about Disney World. But especially coping away from Disney. Which we know a lot about being from the Midwest. Here at Miles from Main Street, our preferred travel agency is Magical Vacations by Kimberly. Kimberly is a Disney expert and can handle all of your Disney planning needs. She can also plan Universal and all major cruise lines. Contact Kimberly at Magical Vacations by Kimberly at Yahoo.com. And find her on Facebook and Instagram under Magical Vacations by Kimberly. So today on Miles from Main Street, we are talking about some park challenges. Uh, we've got a couple of ideas here for you guys. Uh, this is not something that we typically do, being from the Midwest and being from far away from the parks um but it's something that that we enjoy uh seeing other people do and it's definitely something we wish we'd be able to do um and maybe we'll be able to do them at some point um but just love watching uh disney vloggers do this um and all kinds of people uh enjoying these things so we had a so we put together a list of some things that uh we thought would be fun to do at the parks um brian what do you want to start with yeah, like you said, these are some really cool challenges that we've seen people do on their YouTube channel or something, or, or just heard people talk about. I would not recommend this for your first trip <laughs> <laughs> or maybe even your second trip. Mm -hmm. But, you know, these are kinds of things that people that live closer to it um, really enjoy doing. And maybe someday we will get there. But, mm -hmm. you know, it's still fun to talk about and dream about as you're miles and miles away from that park that we love so um yeah the first one that i i've seen a lot of people do is the four parks in one day challenge um and it's exactly what it sounds like you're gonna start it at a park and you're going to end it at another one and you're gonna hit the other two in between um, and how you do that is up to you uh, typically people will do a ride in each park to complete their challenge um you can you can change this around any way you want uh i i know that with the new park hopping rules it makes it a little more challenging because you can't start until two o'clock mm -hmm. you go to your first park you can do whatever you want until two o'clock but then you can't start really hopping until two o'clock exactly so, um, yeah, to be able to go and, and get these four parks, then it, it's a little more challenging. And one of the uh, uh, vlogs that I watched, they actually did all four parks and required a ride, a picture with a character, <laughs> and a snack. Mm -hmm. um, now, the, the ride and the snack, gets, you know that's, that can be pretty easy, but the characters only stay out for so long, right? So you got to be creative with that. How are you going to get a character in Epcot at nine o'clock at night, possibly? <laughs> yeah. So um, it was it was an interesting vlog to watch, and I thought that was a really creative way to uh, plus up the challenge. Yeah, definitely. And I think that it's. I mean, you talked about it. For me, this would be something that I would love to do. Living next to the parks, it's definitely not something to do on like a regular Disney vacation. I feel like, I mean, I, I don't even think that I would do this, something like this if I was on a normal Disney vacation. Uh, however, I have done this before when I needed to literally fit in every single park in one day. Um, I, had a, I had a trip a while back that I went on with my brother and my sister that we had a really, we had a really good time just trying to hit every single park and it, and, it, and it almost kind of ended up being all four parks because originally we were only going to do two parks. Um, and, it, and in our minds, we were kind of like, like two parks in one day is like kind of a stretch, but we'll like, we'll make it happen. Um, and it's really kind of like going through the park and like hitting the stuff that you really want to hit. 
Because I feel like a lot of times when I go, I'm always kind of forcing myself to do something new and like adventure somewhere I've had I haven't adventured before. Whereas if I'm just gonna jump into the park and like hit haunted mansion and pirates and splash mountain and just kind of like peace out, like I feel like that that would be pretty easy. And that's kind of what we did uh, when we went. We um, we started at Animal Kingdom and um, we hit all that stuff there, and then went to uh epcot after that and then hollywood studios and then ended at magic kingdom and all we really did was kind of like go in and hit hit the rides that we wanted to hit and we didn't even like it wasn't even really that hard for us um we were lucky that that magic kingdom was closing at one uh oh those were the days the days that (laughs) magic kingdom closed at one in the morning um so that that was that was great and that made it a little easier um but yeah, it it was actually pretty, pretty doable with just kind of going in and like doing the things you wanted to do and like moving on to the next park. Um, I didn't even really feel like we shortchanged any of the parks when we did that. Um, I mean, Magic Kingdom, we were kind of like sprinting through that, trying to get what we wanted to get done. But then we were able to spend a lot of time in the park as it was closing. Um, and that kind of made it worth it because there's as everybody knows the shopping in magic kingdom is off the chain. So that's pretty good. So, um, (laughs) yeah, it's, it's definitely something I wouldn't recommend as like a, a normal vacation. Uh, but if it's something that like you're in Orlando and you like have a day to do Disney, like, I don't think it's like too out of the question to do it now, whether or not you're actually like following through with like the rules of, uh, four parks in one day where like you're actually getting a snack and you're actually going on a ride and you're actually getting a picture with uh, a character is, is another thing. That's like, that's full game on. Uh, like let's, let's do this challenge. Uh, but if you're just try to hit all four parks in one day, I'd say go for it and give it a try and see if it, see if it happens. It's, po- it's possible that it doesn't happen that you really get into something at one of the other parks, but uh, that's the magic of Disney. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think uh, four parks in one day is pretty doable. Um, you know, it just depends on what you're going to do in each park, like you, mm-hmm. like you said. Um, so the other kind of popular one that everyone talks about is the the mountains challenge. Yes. Yep. All the mountains. Um, now, the mountains are Space Mountain, Splash Mountain. Big Big Thunder Mountain Railroad. Mm-hmm. Um, I tend to th- throw Mine Train in there a little bit now. It's pretty mountainy, yeah. Um, so I mean, if you just want to stick to one park, there's your four, you know, mountains that you need to get through. Um, mm-hmm. maybe put yourself on a time limit to make it more challenging. Yeah. Uh, and then you got to think about Everest Expedition Everest. You mm-hmm. could possibly even add that in as a mountain challenge um so that that's one that people will do a lot of and i think that's a pretty enjoyable one you're hitting up three good rides or you know possibly five great rides so yeah um, yeah yeah go ahead yeah i know i've seen uh tim tracker do this one um i think that was one of the first tim tracker episodes i ever watched was when he did uh, the mountain challenge. Um, and that's kind of what, what that I like learned about doing Disney challenges through, through Tim and, um, all the things that he did. Um, but I think that would be really cool. Uh, other than big thunder, I mean, they all, they're all kind of mountains. Uh, the only one that really kind of isn't is space mountain, but it's like, whatever, it kind of looks like a mountain. Cool. Um, but I feel like, for me, the way that I would do this is I would go to Magic Kingdom and like hit all that and then end the end that challenge with Everest because I feel like that's like the most epic out of all of the mountains. Uh, and it's like, I mean, it's Everest, like the biggest mountain. Um, so that's definitely how I would do it. Um, and like, it's really like, I mean, it's a challenge, but I feel like it would be pretty doable depending on because these are these are all rides that can get especially uh mine train can get really long waits um i've i've waited 
a pretty long time for Big Thunder. I've waited pretty long time for Splash. You're 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 gonna wait a long time for Mine Train, and you're gonna wait a long time for Space Mountain. Um, the crazy thing is the best ride out of all of these. Um, it could be hit or miss whether or not you're waiting a long time for Everest. Um, wait times have kind of fluctuated with that ride. It used to be like the the big ticket. This is the ride that everybody's running to, um, but it kind of isn't that way anymore. But that's kind of uh, it. Could be pretty challenging on some days. Uh, weekends it would probably be pretty challenging. But then on other days, like really honestly, you could probably just like get onto these rides right away. Um, but and I feel like nowadays you can get on all of those rides in one day if that's all you're gonna do. Oh, for you sure. Do that pretty easily, um, especially if you get there in the morning and start right away at Rope Drop. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, it we're we're giving you the basics on some of this. It's it's fun to find ways to make it more challenging. Maybe you need to guzzle a gallon of water between each one, I don't know, <laughs> and then that might be gross. But, uh, <laughs> um, you know, just certain ways you can plus up the challenge and, and make it maybe mm-hmm. a little more difficult. And and really, in many ways, this is kind of people plussing up their Disney experiences, especially locals who won't just, just go to the parks and experience the things. Like, they've gone to the parks several times already. Um, and so that's kind of what, what this is for. It's more of, like, local people or people who have gone to the parks so often that like they kind of need to plus up their experience. Um, and this is one of those ways. Uh, it's definitely makes a lot more sense for people who live there because then you're not completely missing a lot of what the park has to offer. You're just kind of like hitting those things and getting out of there. Um, but yeah, it's, it's definitely a way to kind of like change up what you're doing, kind of plus what you're doing. Uh, another one that can be pretty difficult is trying to hit like, and and the way they talk about this is is kind of two different ways, right? You can hit the opening day rides or the quote unquote classic rides. Um, and I'm and we're talking again at Magic Kingdom. Uh, they've got so many different, and I and I keep saying rides, and that's what I do, but really they're attractions, right? So to do all of the opening day rides or classic rides. You got to figure out what they are. You got to come up with a plan of attack because you could have up to 20 attractions that you're mm-hmm. doing that day. Uh, which hitting 20 things at Magic Kingdom in a day can be difficult. Yeah. And it could also be like, what what are you considering a classic ride? So it's like, I I would kind of consider Peter Pan's flight to be a classic ride only that's not an opening day ride um and so like classic dark rides and stuff like that like is that stuff that you lump into lump into this um and so like those are just like the decisions you got to make uh when you're going to do this one and i feel like this one this one would be interesting because you're you're uh not that like I I skip a whole lot of rides, but like a lot of times with these more classic rides, like some of them I'll skip, like like Small World and stuff like that. Um, and a lot of them, uh, Walt actually uh, helped put together, like Pirates and Mansion. Um, so it can kind of feel like a little more like nostalgia, like if you want kind of, kind of want to like turn the clock back and like experience your childhood. Um, not that you're already doing, you're at Disney World, you're already doing that, um, but. <laughs> just kind of like enjoy these like simple rides that like are in the dark um, and kind of like skip over these. I mean, I would consider space mountain um, a classic and that's kind of a thrill ride, Uh, but kind of, kind of like that original Disney ride, like those original Disney dark rides. Yeah. And to figure out what those are, like you said, you gotta, you gotta talk about it, but I don't know if you want to try to list them right now but i agree completely peter pan small world and um haunted mansion you know those are going to be in there dumbo pirates we've also got jungle cruise uh that's a big one um did you say dumbo already (laughs) i did say dumbo i don't know like i don't think you would throw like barnstormer or 
uh, mm-hmm. now, you know. Um, but like we were talking about the mountains, I think for for, for sure you got to put Splash Mountain in there. Oh yeah. Um, you know, Big Thunder and Splash they didn't come out until the '90s, so I don't mm-hmm. know if you want to include that at all. So and and that's kind of like the line that you draw when you're saying you want to do classic Disney rides or opening day rides because that's like i mean as crazy as this sounds you wouldn't be doing pirates if you were doing opening day rides you're right you pirates didn't open opening day you're right yeah so i mean that would whittle them down immensely like all of a sudden you're you're only doing um probably like four or five rides uh if you if you only did opening day rides which i think would be cool it's just kind of like go in there. I know uh, some of them have gotten facelifts already, um, but kind of go in and kind of see how these rides hold up. I mean, every single time I ride Haunted Mansion, I'm like two thumbs up, like this ride holds up, never change it. <laughs> <laughs> it's so it's so great. Um, but it's it would be cool to kind of like go through those rides. Like I haven't gone on It's a Small World for a long time, and I know when I get off that, I'll be like, I don't know. Maybe I'll love it, but I'll just. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> will it hold up? I know that they've done a lot of stuff to Small World. Um, like they've added characters and stuff. So that would be cool to see. Um, Actually, that's only over at Disneyland that they have the actual. Like, oh, so the one in, in Disney World is just like the normal one. It, it pretty much is. Yeah. <laughs> And, you know, like a lot of people ask, why don't we get Nightmare Before Christmas at, in the Haunted Mansion? And and why can't Disney World have the characters in Small World? Which, when they did those things originally, like everyone was up in arms. But now it's kind of like, why People can't? got mad, yeah. Yeah. But now, you know, there, there are people that want to know why Disney World doesn't do that. And it's like, well, that's because that's where everybody goes, mm-hmm. right? Disney World is where you take your vacation and you don't want to go there the first time and have it down because they're putting an overlay in for <laughs> yeah. Christmas, right? So that's that's the biggest reason that they're not going to do that. Um, now, the characters in Small World, I think that'd be perfect in, in Disney right? World. I don't see any reason why not. That's a year-round thing that they do. So come on, Disney, let's do it. All right, <laughs> you heard it here first. <laughs> I, I think they look pretty cool in the videos I've seen from Disneyland, which, by the way, I need to get to Disneyland. Um, but I think they look pretty cool, so let, let's add them in, in Disney World too. Yeah, but uh, I mean, we we got way off track already, uh, but <laughs> <We> <laughs> that like happens you. at Miles from Main Street. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, th- I think that that would be cool to kind of go on these rides and 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 experience what people experienced back in 1971 when the park first opened. And, you know, uh, we kind of did this when it was my wife and I, I hadn't done some of the old shows. So like the Tiki room and and country bears, that type of stuff. So we went and that was kind of the focus of the day. And we started with the country bears, right? Yeah. I think, yeah, we started with the country bears and then we went to the Tiki room and then we worked our way around and eventually got on Carousel of Progress as well. And, you know, they kind of got a little more dull as he went on. Like, I thought Country <laughs> Bears. I think Country Bears is hilarious. I, I, really, <laughs> I don't know. Um, there is some, some, thing, some appeal to the Tiki Room that I will definitely do that when I go again. I will do it again. Um, that second song, I kind of lose interest, but the first one is enjoyable. I, you know, the tiki 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 room. I'm not singing for you guys. I'm sorry. Um, oh, come on, Brian. It's, you know, <laughs> I got to warm up and, you know, it's a whole process. And I got to go to bed eventually. You know, it, it, it it's just we're not, it's not going to happen. Hey, man, you're, you're in, you're in there, you're part of this family. And if you know this family, you know you can sing. So I know you got pipes. <laughs> I know you can. <laughs> Maybe we'll save that for the one year anniversary if we get there. Oh yeah. Well, oh, yeah. <laughs> where where we should be pretty close for that one. Yeah, well, it's beginning of September. There you go. Yep. September. So here's your here's your uh your advertisement now, guys. Uh keep your eyes and ears open. We're gonna have some so we're gonna we're gonna have some fun for the one year anniversary. So this is kind of one of my favorite things that that 
vloggers and people with podcasts do is make announcements in very vague fashion <laughs> where they're like, <laughs> we got some fun stuff coming up. <laughs> You're just going to have to listen to find out what. <laughs> but I'm telling you, we got good stuff. It, it's coming. <laughs> it's going to be it's going to be good. It's going to be good stuff. Yeah. So who knows? Maybe we'll uh, pull out a piano and get get Mikhailo singing. I don't know. Two live crew or something. I don't know. <laughs> I've got the lovely bunch of coconuts. Do doodly do. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We'll do it. We'll do a medley of Disney music. That's what we'll do. Perfect. There you go. All right. Um, so enough in Magic Kingdom. Uh, we we've hit that enough, I think. So oh, yeah. Uh another fun thing to do is over in Epcot. Um Disney doesn't want to talk about it much, but there is a well-used pastime of drinking around the world where you need to imbibe with something in every park. <laughs> um, I do encourage you to have a bottle of water or some water in between each country mm -hmm. to help your liver out a little bit. Um, but yeah, people enjoy doing this. Um, and I think it can be a, something to definitely try. They do have a lot of great drinks in each country. Yeah, and I've definitely, uh, I've, I've either done this or gotten close to this. I know that me, my brother, and my sister kind of make it a point to try to get something in each country. Um, I know even, even this last time we went, we, we got stuff in Morocco. Um, and we don't, we don't usually do that. Um, and so that's, that was kind of a big thing. I think the only place we didn't get anything this last time we went, um, was Canada. Um, and we were at that point, we were like all the way around actually Canada and the UK. I think at that point we were, we were <laughs> we probably needed to slow down. <laughs> I was, I was definitely walking up to people at La Salle and asking for a table at that point. So I had some liquid courage in me. Um, but yeah, it's, um, it's definitely something fun to do and it kind of forces you to meander into these countries, which for a long time, um, when I would go on vacation, we would just kind of like walk that loop and like look in and be like, oh, that's cool. Um, and this kind of like forces you like even if even if it's not all alcohol, it's like you can go get like sorbet at in France. That's always really cool. Um, you can get maple syrup in Canada. Like there's something in each country that you can go and get. Um, alcohol is just <laughs> usually the most popular one. Um but that's that's definitely something that I would recommend is like if 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 you're going to challenge yourself to try to like get one thing, even if it's like something small at each country, because I know there's a lot of countries, um, but that'll it, it'll definitely force you to kind of like get back there and, and start experiencing uh, what these countries have, because there's a lot there's a lot to experience with these countries. And it, there's a lot of detail back in there, too. Um, and to just miss out on that would, would be a shame. Um, so take that as a challenge. You can, you can go through Epcot. Uh, it doesn't have to be alcohol. If it's alcohol, you're very brave <laughs> and definitely, <laughs> definitely drink your water. Um, yes. and I actually do suggest if you're going to do alcohol, um, start in Canada because actually, no, it's, it's the other way around start in Mexico. Uh, be, <laughs> I just thought of that. Start in Mexico because you're starting with tequila. If you're going to end with tequila, it's it's not going to be a fun time. Um, plus, I just love that tequila bar out in Mexico. Um, that's such a cool uh, tequila bar. And that just kind of shows you how um, Disney's kind of like putting that all out there for you. Uh, like they have like everywhere, every country that you go to has some sort of um, either alcoholic beverage or some kind of like beverage or food item that's like super niche to that country. Um, so go around and um, drink some alcohol if you can and, and uh, have some food and ex uh, experience something uh, in each country. Yeah. So there was on a, one of our trips um, when it was just my wife and me, we went and tried to actually get into each country and see what they had to offer. Because like you said, they have a lot to offer in all of these countries. So there's a challenge right there 
you know, go in and experience each country. We spent some time in the Mitsukoshi department store. Um, you know, we, we spent time walking around the China uh, gift shop there too. We saw some of the movies, you know, you've got the, the um, French movie impressions de France. Um, you've got the Canada, what's called far and wide now. I don't mm-hmm. remember what they used to call it, but um, you know, we saw some of those movies and we had to throw the Canada or the China one out because we ran out of time. So there's a, there's a, um, a challenge in itself right there. Just try to experience something within each of these countries and um, you know, get more out of it than just walking through and going, Oh, look, I'm in Germany and moving on, you know, um, you know, and along the lines of snacking and drinking, um, something that as a family we have tried to do, and we have not been able to complete what our plan was, um, is like a monorail crawl mm. and I'll set it up because I have my kids. I'll set it up as a dessert run, <laughs> um, where you, you know, you get something in each hotel that you're at and share it, whatever it might be. And then you move on to the next resort. Um, this last trip, we tried to do it with the Skyliner. We went to um, Art of Animation and had a couple things there. And then we get, got on the um, Skyliner and we moved on to, I believe, Caribbean Beach is next on that line. And that's mm-hmm. where we yep. stopped. We got stuck there. <laughs> um, because, you know, knowing where you're going for some of this stuff it is helpful. And I didn't quite remember how that Skyliner run works and ended up getting off at Caribbean beach, which required me. And, you know, the family found a nice beachy spot to st- sit and wait, but I had to run basically the entire length of that large <laughs> resort to get to where the food court is and get, and get our dessert and mm-hmm. bring that back. Um, you know, the kids were kind of tired at that point. It was getting late uh, and there was a storm rolling in that we could see coming in. So we decided we better wrap it up at that point because we were afraid of what they're going to do with the Skyliner. And it kind of became a fiasco from that point, getting back to our hotel. But, um, you know, I, I think that one is something that is easily done. You just need to be prepared to do it. Um, the monorail crawl is something people have done many times, and Disney actually has a monorail crawl dining experience that they ran pre-COVID. Um, you know, you would start in in uh, the Contemporary for appetizers. You'd jump on the monorail and go over to Polly, and you'd have your entree there, I believe. Um, you'd then move on to the Grand Floridian, have something there, and you'd finish at the Contemporary again watching the fireworks from a special spot they had picked out for this experience something that i would love to do um and i hope they bring it back because while it is pricey at about 200 dollars a person i think it is something that is a really good experience and can be a lot of fun to do um you know the monorail crawl i set up was dessert uh the grand floridian for some reason doesn't really have a signature dessert I hmm. thought that was kind of weird. Um, but, you know, we we can hit all. We went after dinner for this one. And that's why we failed at this one, because we had eaten too much dinner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so, you know, it was it was something that it's something that can be done. I would create um, I would go onto my word document on, you know, that good old PC. And I would actually type up a nice little chart with check boxes <laughs> and got some laminating paper, you know, ordering off as Amazon is so easy to do nowadays. <laughs> um, so I, would, I got that sent to us and, and, you know, cut it out. So it was a nice little checkbox thing that they could use as we went around. And um, again, something I want to do, try again, because we didn't finish it, um, you know, and Maybe it was poor planning on my part, but I definitely think that's some kind of a challenge that you could do. Yeah, for sure. And I think 
um, that kind of brings up a, a pretty decent point. Um, kind of going back to why you didn't end up finishing that. Um, not the monorail, but the other thing. Skyliner. Why you didn't end up finishing the Skyliner crawl. Uh, and that is Disney weather. Um, and that kind of like those types of factors are there. That's what's going to make it pretty difficult for you to finish a lot of these challenges is just the unexpected things of Disney. Uh, honestly, I have been pretty lucky with the type of weather that I've had uh, when I've been at the parks recently. Um, I remember several vacations uh, that ended up being rainy vacations just because like we went at like that time, like we went at the rainy time, um, which winter that's kind of like the rainy time uh, for Florida. Well, really it's all the time, <laughs> um, but that's when it's going to rain a little more than all the other times. Um, but that's depending on when you go, uh, that could be another big factor is like whether or not you're going to get some of these things done. Um and we've, we've kind of gotten into like the realm of like, like doing these monorail claw crawls and doing the Skyliner crawls. That would just be like something fun to do at Disney. Like that's, I would, I would plan that into my vacation. Like, I mean, most of the time I actually do. Uh, I usually when I go, I'll hit the monorail and we'll go to all of the resorts that are on uh, the monorail line. Um, we won't necessarily like go in get something but we'll we'll go in and we'll experience those resorts because they're just amazing resorts in general um but these are definitely things that like you could do on a vacation like this isn't something special that like just people who live at disney do where it's like it's a lot easier if you live at Dis disney to do some, <laughs> some of this stuff uh, but like again like this is something that i usually plan uh for my vacations uh i have a, a day where I'm going around to resorts. Um, and this would be something fun to include in that time where like you're, you're going to a resort and you, you get some type of a dessert or like maybe a drink at each resort or something like that. Um, and again, that just makes it so that you're, you're actually experiencing the resort a lot more than you would if, you just kind of walked in and looked around at the Grand Floridian. You're like, wow, this place is nice. And then walked out. Uh, I've definitely mm -hmm. done that before. I've done that at several resorts where I've just kind of like walked in. And, and I mean, it's definitely something to behold to go into these resorts. Uh, but to actually go and experience these resorts and have like a reason for being there uh, definitely makes it a lot more enjoyable. I know when I went to the Polynesian recently and I was actually dining there for the first time, uh, that made a big difference where like I was actually there for a reason. I wasn't there just like gawking at how cool the, the Polynesian is. <laughs> so. Yeah. And you know, the, when we first, it, you know, it's, it's funny when you have kids, like what you can get done and what you can't get done. Um, when we were there again with just my wife and I, we spent a whole day just park hopping. That was the plan. And like you said, we started at Polly eating at Ohana and you're like, you're spending time, you're getting comfortable being there. Um, when we did go over to the Grand Floridian and we didn't eat anything because we had just finished at Ohana for breakfast, mm -hmm. but um, we did grab a drink in what used to be Misner's Lounge or Misner's Lounge. I don't know how you would say it, but it's now the uh, Enchanted Forest, I think. The new the, bar. Yeah, that new bar. Yeah. The Beauty and the Beast theme. Beauty and the bar, Beast. Ench lounge. Yeah. Enchanted something. Yeah. Um, but you know, like even doing that where we just grabbed a drink, that still got you in there and feeling a little more comfortable with being there. Mm -hmm. And just the feeling, you know, it's like you've gone from you you've maybe spent two hours in this place, but you get immersed enough that it feels like you've traveled to another time each time you've moved into a new hotel. Mm -hmm. Like it's a brand new experience. And I thought that was really cool with the resort hopping. So, um, you know, going back to how you plan, you would plan like these crawls into your vacation. Like we only did three park days. We were there for seven nights and we only did three park days. 
So we spent a lot of time trying to hit different resorts Mm -hmm. um, on this last trip. And I think that's a great way to spend time there. You don't need to spend every day in that park. You don't need to go home looking for a vacation from your vacation. (laughs) (laughs) You can still have a great time and not be exhausted. Um, So, yeah, I think I think that's a great one. Now, speaking of exhausted. Uh, I believe the next one we were going to talk about is the coast to coast challenge. Um, and I believe you had mentioned Justin Scard, which I don't watch him, but <laughs> you had mentioned he had done this one. Yeah, Justin, uh, I think he did it. It was like a main street thing. So um, he did main street in California and he did main street in uh, world in Florida. Um, and he actually, this is kind of funny. He, I remember he paced out, uh, how long main street is, uh, and found out that the one in world is bigger, obviously. Um, but, uh, just something that he, he was able to do and he did, um, he started the day, uh, in California, got on a plane and went all the way to Florida and was able to make it into magic kingdom and onto main street, uh, on the same day. Um, So that's, I mean, obviously I would love to do that. That would be great to spend time at Disneyland and then end the day at Disney world. That would be great. That would, that would be just like insane. Um, And that's kind of like the harder way to do it because you're losing time flying across the country. Exactly. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So you don't have a whole lot of time to jump on that plane and and get out. Mm -hmm. Um, That that's pretty incredible. I, that would be a fun one to, to attempt. Mm-hmm. And I think this is the only one that we've talked about that I feel like would be pretty difficult to do. Like, I don't know if I do that. Like there, there would be, have to be a lot of planning involved to like actually pull that off. Um, and Justin did a lot of planning. <laughs> like he, 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 w- he was into it. So um, it was, it was very cool to watch. Uh, and that just kind of brings us back to, like we would love to do this kind of stuff. We would love to be able to just kind of go to the, I would love to just go to the park and like hang out and not have to think about like, I'm spending this much money. I only have this much amount of time today. We need to do this, this, and this. I would love to just kind of go into a park and just like say, Hey, what's the cool fun thing that we can do today with this? Um, I, I hope I hope one day I get there. Uh, eventually, I know I probably will. Um, <laughs> uh, I know I've I've kind of wanted to do a staycation where I just kind of go and stay at a resort some t- at some point. Um, and that kind of gets closer to going to Disney and just chilling and just like just hanging out and not like going full Disney uh, on everything. Um, and I think for me it kind of comes down to like, I'm always planning everything out. So I feel like if I did something like this, I'd be missing on out on other things. So that's kind of like the line that you have to draw is like, are you going to feel like you're missing out if you're just doing mountains when you go to magic kingdom or something like that? Um, for, for some people, I'm sure they would have a great time only going on the mountains at, at um, magic kingdom and they wouldn't give it a second thought. Um, I know my, my brain is working differently and I feel like I just need to go do as much as I can. Um, but it would, it would definitely be something cool and something fun to be able to do. Um, and, uh, I, I wish I could do it, but watching these, these Disney vloggers, uh, and YouTubers do it is, is I live vicariously through them. It's, it's very fun to watch them do that. Yeah, I agree. It is a lot of fun. And it may be the only way that I get to see these <laughs> international parks too, because yeah. just the fact that I haven't been to Disneyland yet, you know, and I'm not getting any younger. So it's something that may be the only way to get to all of those parks. Yeah. And that's kind of more of like a big bucket list thing. Um, I know we've been talking about like single day challenges. Uh, that's kind of like a life challenge. <laughs> like, like, <laughs> at some point in your life, hit all of the Disney parks. That's uh, that's definitely on my bucket list. I feel like it's something that I would like to do. Uh, I would like to experience at some point in my life. 
uh, especially like Tokyo Disney Sea and some of these crazy parks that they've put together that are just nuts. Um, I yeah. definitely want want to see those. Um, so that's that's definitely. I mean, that is a pretty decent honorable mention uh, for this, but it's a lot more of like a bucket list. Um, so, yeah, I agree. And what they're doing with some of the really cool rides out in the Asia parks. I mean, come on. You got to bring some of that back here too, because that's what I always say. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and how they're intertwining the SEA in some of this too. <laughs> like that's another tangent. We probably should actually cover one, some one day, but that, yeah, that would, that would be really cool. And that would be a lot of really fun research to do and kind yeah. of like go through and like find all of those little mentions of the SEA and, and kind of like sniff out everything and like re- really like put together like a big web of conspiracy. <laughs> <laughs> and with the jungle cruise coming out, man, I'm going to be all eyes wide open on that. Looking for any, I know you I will. Think. Yep. Yes. Yep. <laughs> um, but you know, that kind of brings it around to tell us, let us know what you're thinking about for a challenge. What things have you seen that would be a lot of fun? Um, we're out on Facebook miles from main street. We, we've got our community group. We'd love to have you come out and talk to us and we don't have to talk about the podcast. We can talk about anything. A lot of news happening right now that we don't cover on here. Um, you know, you want to come out and talk about it. Let's do that. I love to talk about current news coming out of there too. So, um, you know, let's do that. Let us know what challenges you would like to do, what you have seen completed, what we may have missed. And I'm sure there's there's stuff that you guys can think of um, and stuff that we missed. Uh, so yeah, let's let's talk about it. Let's let's put together uh, what's your list um, of challenges that you want to do and things that you want to get done. But with that, that's all we got for you guys tonight, and we'll see you next time on Miles from Main Street. Thanks for tuning in. If you enjoyed the show, please rate us on iTunes and subscribe. Email us at milesfrommainstreetpodcast at gmail.com with any thoughts and visit us on Facebook under Miles from Main Street. We'll be bringing more to you weekly and look forward to talking to you then. Until next week, remember, some live close, but most of us don't. So let's talk about it. (laughs) 